Welcome back. This is Dan Habe with CF Ninja Hacks. And in the Funnel Builder Certification Group, someone had a question about how could we duplicate what was a checkbox element in uh, 1.0. They haven't built that element into 2.0 yet. So I figured I'd shoot a really quick video on how to do it very simply. It's going to take a couple of lines of JavaScript and basically one line of CSS. Uh, but it's a pretty slick way to get it set up um, if you need that kind of thing on your page. So let's take a look how it looks in the real world and here it is down here and this is actually a button element it is not a text element and when I click on that button element what it's going to do is it's going to get a little check mark here but what it actually does is it hides the first button I clicked on and it shows a secondary button and then it also pops open the uh, text at the bottom there and I have no idea why the page just reloaded but here we got the uh, text I'm sorry the input element down here and normally what this was used for um, like I said I don't know why the page keeps reloading what this was used for in 1.0 was normally to collect an SMS uh, text so you can send them an SMS text message on their uh, mobile device so let's take a look at how this is set up so here is the one button that I have and I left the layout open over here so let us um, open up our um, other button and then our input element as well. And again, the input element is as basic as can be. It is just a phone number and whether you require it or not, that's up to you. And then again, style everything the way you want to. This isn't about how to get it styled. So then I had two buttons here. So we'll click on the one button and you put the text into the button up here at the top. And then here on the on click, we're going to say we don't want it to do anything. We want this button to be dumb because we're going to let the code handle that. And then because you're going to have a um, your settings on the page, your style guide on the page, you're going to probably want to come down here and click on these little three dots right here next to where it says one, two, three, and turn off any styling and then do the styling yourself. Because in this case here, I have a transparent background. I have a dark colored on the text. You can change the text size, all that kind of stuff. And then also I had to get rid of the rounded corners and the borders and the shadows as well. But then as you come down here, I had an icon before and um, we're just going to do here FA square. So I just went into here. I typed in the word square right here. And then I found the one that is the empty square like you see there. What I did then is I duplicated this button. And the only difference I made between these two is I came down here and I looked for the square that was the check square. And I put that in there instead. So then what we're going to do, of course, is we're going to hide both of those lower elements again. So we're going to hide the input, we're going to hide the lower button, and that's it as far as setup except for a little bit of code. So let's take a look at our code and um, let's just do it the normal way here. Let's open it up like this. We're going to go to our CSS. Now because this element right here is a button, it wants to be centered in the middle and also it is a flex element inside of uh, 2.0. So let's take a look at that. Here is the button itself, or at least one of the buttons. And so what we had to do is we had to come in here and we had to say align items flex start instead of what it had been was flex center. So it was trying to align in the center. We have to say flex start, which would mean go to the left-hand side. So that's why we had to change that CSS right there. And that's it. And oh, let me just show you how, how this gets set up, of course. So let's go into this element here. And we're going to click on the little code thing. We're going to come down. <clears throat> and I gave it the CSS ID selector of show SMS. Then when I duplicated it and I created the second one, I gave that one the ID of hide SMS. So you see the two of them here, show SMS and then hide SMS. And when you're doing this, you type in the words right there. You hit the update button. It'll be white at that point. And then you can just click on this here and you can copy it, drop it in over here. Now we are not focusing really on the outer part of the element, which would actually be up here. This would be the outer part of the element. And you see in this case here, it says hide SMS. We need to focus on the inner part of the element. And I had the class in here of L button. I really should just put in the tag of A. So I'm gonna do that, come back here, because we're when you click on a button, when you click on any kind of hyper text link on a page, you're always really just clicking on 
the inner part of it, which in this case here is the A tag, which is the anchor text tag, which is the part that actually holds the link or the information about where you're going to go or what you're going to do. In this case here, we made it a dumb button, and so it just says here href with nothing after it because it's not actually going anywhere. There's no hypertext reference to send it anywhere else. So that is our CSS there, basically one line of CSS. And then we come over here to our footer code, and let's just open this up a little bit. And you see here we got our script and our script right here. So we got our opening and closing script tags. And what we're just going to say is so that when – so what we're saying here is when somebody clicks on this element, so on click run this function of three lines here. So we're saying that when somebody clicks on the show SMS A, we want them to do something. When they click on the hide SMS A, we want them to do something. And remember, that's exactly what we used here was show SMS A and hide SMS A. So when you click on those things, we want to do something. Well, if you have the one button showing, we want to hide that button and we want to show the, um, I put in here SMS button. I should have said SMS input here is what this really should say right there. So let's just change this out. We're going to change that to input. We're going to copy that we're going to put that down here as whoops now i just all right let's type this i'll get this right here we go sms input and then i will go in and i will change the actual element itself here in a second so when we click on the original button without the check mark we want to hide the button without the check mark we want to show the button with the check mark and we want to show the input element exact opposite when you click on the one with the check mark, we want to hide that. We want to show the one without check mark, and we want to hide the input element, just like you saw as we were doing it. And so now the one last thing I have to do is go back in and fix that element. And I love the layout here in uh, 2.0, the layout element, because I come in here, I can simply get right to where I need to be. We're going to put this here. We're going to change that to input. We are going to update that. We're going to save the page. We're going to reload. And with all my goofing around here, hopefully I did not wipe out anything or mess it up too bad and it's still working. Should not have messed it up. We'll see. Boom, there we show the phone. Click it again, turns it back off. So you can toggle back and forth here like this. Now, the one thing I said is as we were doing this, this said that it was required, and I just thought of this is because normally in a case like this, you're going to have another form above this. You're going to be asking for an email address and a name and stuff above this, and then you're going to say, oh, do you also want to get an SMS text when the webinar is going to start or something like that, and you put in a phone number. Well, if they close this up so you're not seeing it there, that's going to cause a problem if we had a set to required. So what we really want to do is come into that input element. So again, we'll come to our layout, make it easy to get there. Come in here. Oops, turned it off. Let's see if we can get in here this time. Nope, it's wanting to not play nice with me. Let's do it this way. And we'll come into the element now. There we go. And let's turn off the required because, again, if uh, – let me see here. Set it to not required and it doesn't want to change. But you get what I'm saying here. We want to set that to not required because, again, if somebody has that turned off and it says that it's required, the page won't be able to save. And then they'll be sitting there scratching their head and putting in a support ticket, or even worse, you're going to lose them. They're not going to sign up, and they're not going to get to your webinar. So make sure you set that as not required so that if they don't turn this on, if they don't see it, if they don't care about SMS, um, that it's not going to keep the form from submitting and being able to capture that context information. So I think that answered the question of how to create this input element. If you have any questions, just let me know.